But when you get seasoned, you realize that when bad things happen, something good's going to come from it. That's made life a little easier for me to realize, okay, this is just one of those tests. It's a speed bump. Sometimes they're taller speed bumps, but I know something good's going to come from it. We adopted that philosophy. We tried to have fun and we just didn't want to be trapped. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Our guest today is so many years of experience just being in business, uh, entrepreneur, real estate, uh, but he's also a retired orthopedic surgeon and a physician uh, and for the United States ski team. Uh, and so his name is Tom Burns. I mean, we learned so much with him. We did a series of shows with him, which are, you're going to get the pleasure of, of hearing and learning from him. Uh, he's over 25 years of real estate experience, has acquired and developed over $500 million uh, dollars in real estate uh, locally and internationally. He's a co-author and, and uh, principal of Presario Ventures, a real estate private equity company focused on apartment development and private equity in Texas and the Sun Belt. Uh, Tom and I went through a number of things. And uh, in this first segment, as you know, if you've been listening to the show a long time, which I hope you have, if not, I'm so thankful you are with us now. And I hope you have liked and subscribed. I'm, I'm going to be grateful for, uh, for that. So please share the show. Uh, but the first segment today, man, Tom and I just jumped through, you know, being a physician and getting started in real estate. And this can apply to anyone, not just physicians, but uh, any of us who have a crazy schedule or maybe a crazy W-2 schedule, or, you know, or even if it's another business and you're trying to get started in real estate, you're going to learn a lot from Tom today and how he did that. And uh, he's going to jump through many things, but you're going to hear over the next couple of days, different things that we're going to learn from Tom that I know no matter where you're at in this business and uh, whether you're passionate passive or active, you're going to learn a lot. Tom, welcome to the show. Honored to have you on. I know there's so many listeners who can relate to your story or they're thinking about hopefully doing what you have done and making a, a prosperous career shift. Uh, that can be a time where it's you're kind of rocking on uh, hot coals, it seems, right? Or, or you're nervous or maybe you're about to walk on hot coals, right? People are nervous about some of that or thinking about that career shift that they're going through or maybe they're looking forward to doing. And I know you have done that successful. You've helped many people now. Uh, you even have a mastermind. I know people, deals, adventure, that's something that's important to you. But let's jump into who's Tom and how did you get into to real estate? But let's back up to what you did before and maybe what you're still doing. Yeah, you bet. And, and I'm really looking forward to our conversation, Whitney. So yeah, my story is, I don't know, it's not that exciting, but I started as a kid here in Austin, Texas. And I always tell everybody I was an athlete, which makes you think I was great. I was pretty good at what I did, but there's levels of good, right? So I thought maybe that's how I was going to make a living as, as kids have those kind of dreams. And finally came to the realization that nobody was going to pay me to do what I was doing. So I looked for something else to hang out with athletes. So I was pretty good in school, decided I'd be a doctor, an orthopedic surgeon, and a sports guy so I could hang out with athletes. So that was what I did. Med, college, med school, residency, and I had a nice long career as a doctor. But if you take that story back, I actually really enjoyed being a doctor. The reason I enjoyed it is because in my training... I came to the realization that maybe working for a living and trading my time for money was not the best thing. I saw the people that that were training me. You know, in our line of business, it's an apprenticeship model. So you're trained by people who are doing what you're supposed to do for the next 30 or 40 years. And so I was being trained by these doctors. And about halfway through my training, I, I realized they were on their third or fourth marriage and they were complaining about not having any control. They're working at 10, 11 o'clock at night. And I don't know if I tell everybody it was a, a touch from an angel or blind luck, but I finally realized I didn't want their money if I had to have their life. I didn't want to be trapped like that when I was 40, 50, 60 years old. So I started looking for something else. And that's what got me into, I looked for a lot of things, stumbled into a lot of blind dead ends, but eventually sort of fell on real estate, which kind of worked in parallel with my medical career. And and kind of ended up here we are today. And so I'm pretty happy with my life and have enjoyed a good run since that time of training a long time ago. Wow. So you did become a doctor. You were going through training. You were working with other doctors. The writing was then on the wall. It's like, okay, you don't want to become this person you're being trained by. Ultimately, you right. don't want their lifestyle. And it sounds like maybe family was more important to you than having a successful practice if that's what it meant, you know, to do. Absolutely. And people always talk about the quote, rich doctor, right? 
which was, you know, why I coined the first name of the first company was, uh, is that you know, you're not really rich if you got to trade your time or see patients or do surgery, because if you get hit by a bus or you get sick or you get COVID or something like that, the music stops. So, yeah, and I always wanted to have fun. In fact, my wife and I had this mantra that whatever we did, whatever trials we went through, we were going to try to make sure we had fun doing it. And it didn't look like those guys were having fun. And so I had no grand plans, no huge net worth goals or numbers goals. All I wanted was enough money coming in from somewhere else that I could choose what I wanted to do. And, and it worked out over time. I love that, that you and your wife decided together that whatever trials, I mean, whatever difficulties come our way, because they're, they're going to come, right? No matter who we are, they're going to come. But I, I think it's it's great as as you all looked forward into that, knowing they're going to come and, and said, ultimately, we're going to make the best out of them. We're going to have fun through them together. Is that accurate? It is. And, and you know, it's not, it's not always that fun when you're going through trials and errors and learning your lessons through mistakes. But, you know, sure, I can tell you, as I look back over, you know, 30 years, it's uh, every time there was something bad that went on and anytime there was a trial, trouble, almost that why me thing, which we never actually did the why me, but uh, there's always a lesson that comes from it. Always. It either came immediately or maybe 10 years later. As you get older and a little more seasoned, that's a nice way for saying I'm getting older. But when you get seasoned, you realize that when bad things happen, something good's going to come from it. That's made life a little easier for me to realize, okay, this is just one of those tests. It's a speed bump. Sometimes they're taller speed bumps, but I know something good's going to come from it. We adopted that philosophy. We tried to have fun and we just didn't want to be trapped. And, you know, it sounds strange to be trapped in a profession that's well respected and makes quite a bit of money. I mean, that's a that's a well-paid profession. And I enjoyed the heck out of it for 30 years. In fact, I practiced medicine for 12 over 12 years when I didn't need the money. My real estate was making enough money that I didn't have to be a doctor. But Whitney, when you when you have choice, when you've got some control over your time, over your decisions, I was able to eliminate the annoying things about medicine. Every job has annoying things, right? Everything does. Life's not perfect. I was able to eliminate as many of the annoying things as possible. That Being a doctor was fun. So fun that I did it free the last four years of my practice. So That's awesome. Uh, you know, When you have choices over your time, you can eliminate the things, the annoying things that you don't want to do. 100%. It should be a goal for most of us, all of us, right? Absolutely. So you were a doctor for 30 years. I think it's interesting. Your last 12 years, you could have done something else, but you still chose to to be in there. But, you know, it was in your training where you, you, that you realized that you didn't want that type of lifestyle as these other doctors that were training you. Uh, and you started to learn about real estate. Speak to that a transition or, or really it really wasn't a transition, but how you were doing real estate, how you got into real estate while being a physician. I know there's numerous physicians who are investors with us who would love to do what you have done. Right. And so how'd you get into real estate while well, working that busy schedule? Or, or did you go into a certain type of practice where you didn't have to work as many hours, you know, or what, what did that look like? Yeah, sure. And, you know, when, when you really want to do something, you'll always find the time. Right. So now, this was a long time ago, a little bit before the Internet was really going strong and there were no podcasts and things like that. Don't feel sorry for me. There was plenty of stuff there, but I, I made the decision then. So I looked at things. I looked at going into administration. So I, I tell people it sounds pretty cool to wear a suit and carry a briefcase when you're wearing scrubs all the time. But that turned out to be a dead end, turned out to be employment. And I found out I was pretty unemployable. I looked at other things, you know, building a business, trading stocks. I didn't have the money or the expertise to do either one of those. Didn't have the time for either one either. So I kind of stumbled on the real estate. No previous training, by the way. Absolutely zero business classes in high school, college and med school. Big surprise. That's what most medical people go through. But I kind of like, you know, real estate's pretty easy to understand. I th think you'd agree. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Easy math. So I started learning about it. I grabbed books and read books about it. I did that through my training. So I, I didn't buy anything while I was training because I was poor as a church mouse anyway and working 80 hours a week. So I got out and then I did what's called a fellowship. This story has a has a good point. So a, a fellowship's an extra year of sports medicine training. I did it in Vail, Colorado with a really famous guy. Well, that guy was famous enough that everybody across the world came to see him. Very wealthy people. And so I decided to keep my mouth shut and my ears open. And I would spend long periods of time talking to these people and just kind of learning how they made their wealth, how they thought about wealth, how they thought about life. And that became 
became a good classroom for me. Again, no money to invest. Then I came back as a doctor, made a reasonable salary, paid off relatively meager debts. I did not want to put my family, I had a nice job. I didn't want to put my family at risk because of my uh, attention deficit. So I kind of got some bills paid off. And by then I had gotten as much education as I could, or at least learning education that I needed to go get some real education, meaning you need to jump in. You get your best education when you when you act and when you're in the game. So I just went and bought something. Very early, soon, soon after I, I got out of uh, training, I went and bought something. I bought a student condominium at the University of Texas wow. and knew nothing. I knew absolutely nothing. And the people involved in the deal just helped hold my hand and usher me through it. But you were in Vail, Colorado at the time. Is that right? And you're buying a deal in Texas? No, no. I was in Vail, Colorado, finished my time, moved back to Austin, Texas oh, okay. to start, okay. my, start my doctor practice and kind of use that money. I tried to live fairly frugally. You know, we did buy a house, but not a big house. And so we kept our bills down and I used what I had kind of a small salary actually at the time. And I used that to pay some bills off. And when all that was left was the house mortgage, I uh, started saving money to invest with and I just jumped in and bought something. So why real estate and not some other kind of investment, uh, you know, or a stock market or some kind of 401k, you know, something the normal, the, the way we're typically guided, right, to invest for retirement? Oh, yeah. I try to be a good student. Wasn't always one, but I try to, you know, I try to listen and do what I'm told. So so I was listening to the conventional wisdom. I got a financial planner. He had me buy what's called zero coupon bonds to finance my kids' college costs 18 years later. Those weren't very good. <laughs> but I was putting money into, you know, a side. we didn't have a 401k. We had a simplified employee pension plan, a set plan for my practice. So I was putting money in there. I was putting money in the stock market. I was putting money in these dumb bonds that never made any money. But learning real estate, I was doing it all at the same time. So what I liked, and so I was doing all that, right? What I liked about real estate was that it moved slow, I didn't have to be, I mean, I was working a lot. I was working a full schedule, taking a lot of call up late at nights. That's what young doctors do. And I didn't have time to do stock trading. I did try it for a while. You know, when Dell computers, when it was on its run, it would split like eight times. So you could buy Dell stock and sell it six months later, and make tons of money. I did a little bit of that, but that was just an, an idiot getting lucky. But the real estate, it moved slow. I didn't have to be first in or, or first out or, or first in or last out, whatever. I could do it part-time or full-time. And I surely needed part-time because I was a busy doc. I could use partners. I didn't have partners yet, but that was, again, a part of my strategy. So I just it moved slow enough for me. I was able to understand it and do it. And so I bought something. And that's where I started learning my lessons. Yeah, good for you for even taking the action or or moving forward, right? Making something happen uh, and buying the first deal. You know, as you're a physician and you're getting into real estate, any setbacks that you encountered, uh, you know, over those years or especially early on that would help the the listener right now who's looking to make this same transition or at least to buy the first few deals while they're also a physician or working, you know, a similar type schedule. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, nothing, things don't always go right. I suggest all physicians have their properties professionally managed. I still get people in my mastermind and say, hey, it's going to cost me to get management. Maybe I'll just do it myself. Just don't do it. Get management. You know, you, you'll get better tenants. You'll get more rent. You'll have less troubles. But the reason I mention that is I did have managers from, from day one. So that helped because I didn't get the phone calls. All I got was the checks. It's kind of a nice deal. I like that. I put a little money down, I get a check every month. So that's one thing. But I guess, clue me back in on the question again. Yeah. Because any setbacks that you encountered while trying to buy real estate, while working that physician type schedule? Yeah, that was probably Freudian. I probably wanted to forget about it. I've had tons. I've lost a lot of money. I've lost seven, well over seven figures just because I, you know, that's, and those are lessons, right? Those are investments in my education. So I, people come to doctors, people come to folks with money, you sell a business and now you've got a big pile of money and you're supposed to be a good investor. Those that need equity for their projects are going to come to you. So you, you do fall prey to that somewhat. So I invested in some deals that looked good and weren't so good. So I lost money there. You know, past performance, I'd invest in a deal that did well, you know, in one iteration and iteration number two didn't do so well. So just pretty much lost all that. Did some oil and gas deals with one person I knew really well. It tanked, not because he was bad. It just that's that happens, you know, and then somebody else that wasn't so good. 
I've I've run into my share of uh, con men, criminals, and Ponzi schemers. Absolutely, one of them's in jail. Some of them have ended their own lives, and so those people are out there. So you, you just learn. You become a little more discerning. And even when I thought I had learned how to judge people, how to judge a deal, you, you know, you're you're always still learning, and and that translates to I still lost some more money. So I, I lose a lot less money right now, and so those lessons have come back to um, help me and help me make more money. But yeah, lost a ton of money. Sometimes those deals you have to go the legal route, and nobody wins. We've won legal battles, big, very big, to where the judge said, "This is stupid. You guys shouldn't have ever done." You know, really on our side. But you still lose. You get your money back. You lose all the time, yeah. all the mental uh, effort to do those sort of things. So you never really want to get into legal battles and lawsuits. They're not fun. They sometimes become necessary. So I bought an apartment complex, which you would think is awesome. I was buying single family condominiums. I bought an apartment complex way back in the early 2000s. Unfortunately, I don't know anything about multifamily properties. So Bought it wrong, did all the wrong things, got the wrong management, et cetera, et cetera. And was able to at least offload it and not lose too much money. So yeah, that's a long list. We could do a whole episode on the, the mistakes I've made. Yeah, no, and we've all made them for sure. And, and no doubt about it. It's just interesting hearing, you know, you're able to buy these properties and even buy a multifamily project, you know, while still being a physician and operating a successful uh, you know, uh, business, right. As a, as a doctor. And so that's a schedule that most don't want, you know, even as you talked about, you know, early on, even on the per more personal side of this, how were you able to be at home or how were you able to, you talked about your, your doctor, the doctors that were training, you had been through numerous marriages and working so many hours, just never, you know, how did you manage that? So you're making these things happen, you know, as a doctor, but also in real estate, but still, you know, keeping the main thing, the main thing, I guess you could say, you know, at home. Yeah. When you start out any job, any profession, you're working hard, right? You're learning, you're working, you don't know your craft that well. You're you're not smooth in your craft. So I was working a lot. So my real estate time was evenings before work and weekends. Big surprise, right? But you can do that to start out with. For the kids, they were one was not born when I started and one was about two and a half. So probably that first year I did more work than I would have liked to. You know, sometimes I would get home late and then quickly change that. To where I finished early in the day. I uh, just sequentially, as the passive income started increasing, I started eliminating some time that I was working. First thing I did was eliminate Friday afternoons, which was, I felt like I was Elon Musk. You know, I had two and a half day weekend, I was free, right? Um, it was a big deal back then. So I got to where I would finish early. And so, because I wanted to be at the bus when the kids got home at 3 30, and that, I started doing that very early. So, you know, zero and almost three years old. By the time they were five and six, I had adjusted my schedule and it cost me a little money, but, you know, the benefits were already pretty evident. They just, they loved it. And we, I, I met them at the bus and I jumped on the trampoline with them when uh, they brought their kids home. It's kind of silly for an orthopedic surgeon to have a trampoline. You think I was trying to create <laughs> business, but nobody, nobody hurt themselves until they were seniors in, in high school. So that, yeah, and I just so much enjoyed my family and my kids. Early on, I sacrificed the mornings. So I didn't I didn't put them off to school because that was part of the efficiency plan that I used. As, as a doctor, I was an efficiency freak because I wanted to get the work done so that I'd have time either for the kids or to do some real estate stuff. So I started a little bit earlier than other doctors and made sure we got things done in a in a timely manner, not rushing through patients. I never did that, but surgery can be done very efficiently if you get the whole team working on the same page. So I, that's what I did. I worked on my efficiency, which bought me time. Surprise. We're always talking about time. And I used that time to buy me passive income, which bought me more time, which gave me more time with my kids and my family. Yeah. I love how uh, you know, your, your time with your kids or being there, you know, when they got off the bus was more important than making a little more money. You know, you talked about sacrificing a little bit of money, but I think you gained so much more. Uh, it would have been a greater sacrifice to have made that money, I think, uh, you know, in a big way. The best gift I've ever been given, if I could tell this short little story, years later, and in their late, when my daughter was in her late 20s, we were at a wedding of one of her friends, and I'm standing in a circle of girls, all these 29-year-old girls, her close, you know, her, her friend cohort, right? One of them looks up at me at some point, and she goes, Dr. B, that's what they called me. Dr. B, you were always the fun dad. 
that was my best gift I ever received in my entire life. So it might it might have taken 30 years, but boy, that was a big gift. And I'll take that one to the grave. Yeah, that says so much uh, that you you didn't sacrifice that money. I mean, you you spent that time very wisely, obviously, you know, with your kid, like talking about jumping on the trampoline. That's incredible. Uh, well, I, I just appreciate your focus on that. Believe it or not, I talk about it quite a bit on the show, you know, just not sacrificing your family to be successful in real estate or any other kind of business. And, and I've had a number of guests that, you know, where we've talked about that and me personally, but, but I know you wrote a book, like why doctors don't get rich. Uh, speak to that a little bit. And, and maybe there's some concepts or the mindset behind that, uh, you know, and speak to the doctor or, you know, or that, that person that can relate to that uh, listening right now, uh, before we move into, you know, the next couple of topics uh, that are going to be much more focused into your business and multifamily and those things. But speak to that book and the concepts behind that. You bet. And my friend Robert Kiyosaki came up with the title. I love it. He's a good title creator, but that's not a knock on physicians. That's basically that that title's a metaphor for the fact that no matter how much you get paid per hour or per event or per task, if you lose the ability to perform that task, music stops. And you don't, and you, and you don't have any more income coming in. So that's not true wealth. That's not true being being truly rich. You know, to be truly rich and wealthy is to have assets that provide income. So you want the kind of income that keeps coming in, whether you're vacationing, playing with your kids, working, sleeping, or or just you know knocking off. So that's the premise of the book. And so I wrote it. Yeah, quite honestly, it was his idea to write the book. I, first, I said, no, you know, nobody wants to book for me. And he said, I ah, just write a book. <laughs> so I said, OK, if you can do it, I can do it. So I wrote the book with no business plan in mind. It was truly written to provide open guidance to those that wanted to create a better life for themselves. So I spent a long time writing it. I spent two and a half years writing that book. I wrote every word, very poor leverage on my part. You know, I didn't use a ghostwriter. But it's all me and it all came from the heart. And I interviewed a lot of doctors, professionals, business owners, people like that, and kind of got their feel. And and so that's why I wrote it. And, and I hope it seemed to have expanded uh, across the world pretty well. As I've done no marketing because I'm the world's worst marketer. But uh, it, uh, it, it's designed to help people. And, and hopefully it's doing that. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. It sounds like that's what you learned when you were working with those doctors early on or in training, right? It started to hit you that. Uh, like you were talking about, if you lose the ability to perform those tasks and the income stops and all of a sudden it's not true wealth, like you said. I, I know Kiyosaki's big about what he said, measure your wealth by uh, how long you can not work, right? How long you can, the business can operate without you, uh, you know, something 100%. like that. hundred uh, percent. How long can you survive without working? That's your true wealth. It's been a pleasure to get started with you anyway, you know, and, and get to know you. Just so the listener knows, we're going to do a couple more days with Tom and dive into multifamily specifically and his business and and uh, how he has grown and just numerous topics are around that, even uh, HUD loans and, and how he is using those as well. Tom, thank you so much again. And tell the listeners how they can get in touch with you and learn more about you. You bet. If you just go to rich.life, you can get to the website and it's got a lot of good information there. And in fact, there's a free gift. If you're interested, if you go to rich.life forward slash toolkit, I've got some things there that have helped me over the last 30 years kind of develop my my real estate portfolio. And hopefully it's helpful. It's free. It's, it's for anybody that wants to use it. Thank you for being with us again today. I hope that you have learned a lot from the show. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you're telling your friends about the Real Estate Syndication Show and how they can also build wealth in real estate. You can also go to lifebridgecapital.com and start investing today.